Hi everyone, my name is Chris Griffin. I'm an engineer and producer in New York City, but today I am 15 hours away in Daytona Beach, Florida, taking some time away and getting some recordings ready for next year. I've asked Daytona State College if they would allow me to come in and shoot this video and get it ready for you guys, and they graciously agreed. It's a wonderful program here. They've got an SSL Duality, an API console, lots of outboard, two amazing live rooms. And speaking of live, they have a whole live sound program here with performance venues and the whole thing. A couple of friends of mine years ago came down and started this program with money provided by Mike Kerb, so I'm happy to be here. I'm also really happy to be with Antares again, and I'm happy to be working with Insta. Lots to cover, so let's get started. We've got two videos for you today. In this one, we're going to talk about all the different versions of Autotune, from Autotune Access to Artist, all the way through Autotune Pro, and we'll tell you about the different versions of those so you'll know which one to go buy and which one will fit your needs. And in the second version, or in the second video, we're going to talk about all the AVOX plugins and how Autotune Unlimited can fit your needs as well. So with the two videos, you're going to have the whole product line covered, so let's get started. Let's talk about Autotune first. Here's a session I'm working on with a young artist in New York named Haley. You can see it's got a scratch lead vocal, so it's still kind of in progress, but let me let you hear what's going on, and this will be the perfect vehicle to show you some of what I want to show you today. I wish I was a superhero And I could sing along, you know how you get to know these songs pretty well when you're producing them. Okay, so that's, that's Haley, this is this session, and as I was prepping this video series, you know, this could devolve into a product video really quick where I just show you all the features and that'd be done. But what I thought I would do is show you what these can do in the right hands. And of course, you want to be those right hands. That's why you're watching a video like this. So let me start kind of from the bottom of the product line all the way up. And I'll show you the cool tricks and features that you can do even with the lower end versions of Autotune. So again, we'll start with Autotune. I'll bring up Autotune Access first. You can kind of get a look at all my cool plugins. Yay me. It's the quick and dirty version. It's kind of the pop it on and go. At first glance, it looks a little plain, but that's the idea. You know, it's a hundred bucks and it, it gets you into the game. And if you'll put it on fast retune speed where it kind of comes up, uh, put it in the right key. And speaking of key, I know, you know, I'm a musician. I kind of know what's up uh, with this and I'm producing it. So I know, but let's say you are, and let's listen to a little bit of this with auto key I wish and see if it'll get the right key. I know what it is. Flying everywhere, saving All right, everyone. A minor is the key. And so we'll just press this button and watch Autotune go over to A minor there. And then we'll close that out. Now we're setting to A minor. So listen to what uh, Autotune Access can do. It's the kind of the quick and way to get that Autotune effect. And we could everyone. use Humanize to relax a little bit. So there's your kind of quick and dirty. But what we can do is automate some of these things. So for example, if we removed all the notes and just hit A, we could force her to A here. Let me get rid of humanize. Or we could glue her to E, or E here. All right, little glitchy, got it. But what if you began automating some of this stuff? So in Pro Tools, of course, you have to set up your automation unless it's defaulted. So let me do that quickly. I'm just gonna take all the notes from uh, the A minor scale here, bring them in, come look at some lanes here in Pro Tools. Let's just add a bunch of lanes. Uh, for now, we'll just do a couple. So I'm just gonna do A, and maybe E over here. And what I'll want to do is let's disable everything so that we can have control over exactly what comes on. We'll take this right here and bring that to A and then maybe this note over here just for showing you really quick, we'll turn this on to E and this one here we'll put back to A only. All right, so let's play and let you see what's going on. I wish I was a superhero. A little glitchy, we'll fix that in a minute. 
All right, through the magic of offline editing, what I've done is automated every note that I wanted to do, and I've automated some retune speed setting here, uh, which will help it from glitching so badly. And let me, well, let me play a little bit and show you what I've got going, and watch all the automated. Pretty cool. See this automating. Okay, and so that's really cool. That's a great way to do things. Uh, and that's Autotune Access. All right, let's move to the next plugin up the Autotune food chain. That's Autotune Artist. And when it comes up, you'll see that there's a lot of controls to, you know, love on your vocal or signal a little bit. In fact, it looks a lot like Pro. And it is a lot like Pro, except that there's no graph mode here. Autotune Artist has all of the automatic features that Pro would have. And, you know, you'll want to match your input type to the signal you have. So soprano for female vocals, you know, bass instruments and so forth. And like before, we could set the key with auto key. But if you're really cool, you'll use the new phone app. And I've already got it set to A minor. And we'll just literally say, send to autotune here. It asks which computer I want. I'm going to confirm that. And it'll send it right over. So you'll see soprano A minor and it works. So there's that. All right. Retune speed determines how fast or slow Autotune responds to an incoming note. And it's set out of the box at 20. And I find between 20 or 30 milliseconds is great for most pop vocals. I've set up a quick session here with a sign sweep. So let's check it out. And you can hear the smoothness of the sweep. But if I engage Autotune at a default retune speed of 20, here's what it sounds like. And you can hear the different scale degrees and so forth uh, with a little smoothness to the attack. But if I kick it up to zero, you'll hear instant scale degree. And that's kind of how it works. And if you'll check out these graphics, uh, here's another way to look at it. And you can see the the line and then the retune scale, it's, uh, you know, with the curves and so forth, and that's at 20. And then here it is at zero, and you can see the instant note on, uh, and it's instant, and so that's the retune speed at zero. And that's a great way to look at retune speed. Again, a, t a setting of 20 or 30 milliseconds is perfect for most pop vocals. The autotune effect, you know, that pop effect that we all love is very effective and very identifiable. That's always at zero, so just slam it up there and enjoy. Okay. The advanced feature set in Artist allows you to do all kind of cool stuff. What I want to do is I want to extend a note over here, create some vibrato, and then show you what Humanize does uh, on some of the longer notes, especially with the really fast retune speed. So let me again kind of do some offline editing, and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about once I get these words extended. Here we go. All right, here's where we are. I just took this one word and stretched the fire out of it. Listen. And you may remember it was the saving every one. Saving every one. And there, there it is. One. And so let's come over here. And in this case, I'm going to use Autotune Artist from the Audio Suite side. And the only difference is this burns it to the actual file, and we're going to actually create some vibrato. And then I'm going to show you how Humanize works. So I'm going to set a sine wave here and maybe turn it up. And let's audition it. There we go. So let's burn that. Let's render that to the file here. Close this out. Then back over in Artist here, we're going to open it up. And let me show you what Humanize does. So if we have a fast retune speed with this vibrato, just to flatten it out a little bit. But if we increase humanize, it will relax it just very slightly. It's a subtle effect. Uh, so let's turn it on up and you'll hear. Very nice. FlexTune is one of those controls that I use to keep a great vocal from sounding over-tuned, and we'll get more to that in a minute. Well, let me show you what FlexTime does. So I'll bring up a graphic, and normal tuning 
splits the half steps and everything above the line gets pushed up to the next note in the scale degree and everything below the line gets pushed down to the previous note in the scale degree. And this works really, really well for note quantization until you get a singer with creative bends and so forth. And so a bend might actually be interpreted as auto-tune as a note and it'll hold it too long, keeping it up at that half step. Or you might have a bend that kind of comes down or some vibrato that comes down and then it'll pull it down and it shouldn't mess with it at all. And what flex tune does is it kind of creates an ignore area for these cases and everything in the middle there gets ignored and everything of course above gets pushed up and everything below gets pushed down. So it kind of creates this no man's land and that works really well. And so notes that should be now left alone actually are. Okay, formants are those non-pitched aspects of the vocal tract, all the consonants, it's like fricatives and plosives and so forth, everything you don't want pitched. And so Autotune deals with this with DSP. I've got a session, let's open it up and take a look. Let me play just a little bit of it with format control on. Here we go. I'm cycling around in the room, too many drinks I consumed, to even remember you. I'm drinking up all the past Memories that make me crash I thought that you were the last But you hated that I'm Great! It's a really clear vocal, it's free of artifacts, and it sounds wonderful. All right, Format offers the ability to change the length of the throat and thereby compressing the formats or expanding them. The default is 100, so let's play a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We could compress them or expand them. And so, you know, let's bring it back to 100 and talk about how transpose and throat go together. So we could transpose the whole program if we want, kind of keeping the formats intact, or we could compress the formats and go full on chipmunk here, or expand them and get some really otherworldly sounds. All right, while we've got everything set up still, I want to go uh, zero out these controls and talk about classic mode. So classic mode is the classic auto-tune 5 algorithm from soup to nuts. It really is uh, auto-tune 5 in a nutshell. You can see that flex tune and uh, throat and all the format controls gray out because the original auto-tune 5 algorithm did not have those. And so since we're going to go back, we're going to go back. Let me show you what it uh, sounds like. Uh, classic is especially apparent at high retune speeds, and that's really what it does. It goes back to that thing that we all like. Let's listen. I'm cycling around in the room. Too many drinks I consumed. To even remember you. To hear you. Now, if I turn classic off and turn format on, we're still going to have the auto tune effect. It just won't be so shall we say, mechanical. Check it out. It's got a different flavor to it. Yeah, you can hear it. Or you could have format off or kind of a different sound. So we've got the best of three worlds here. Let me, well, let me play it again. Format on. Relaxes it just a little bit, right? And you can still have that auto tune effect, and this is going to go full on. It's that sound, right? So we've got uh, nothing on for kind of a modern sound. We've got format on for really clear, clean effect, especially at a retune speed of about 20 or 30. I'm cycling around in the room. Too many drinks I consumed. To even remember you. Somewhere in there. And then classic for that, you know, throw it to zero kind of effect. All right, so enough about features. Let's get into cool. You remember the Autotune Access demo we did earlier where I automated some of the notes and kind of made a custom scale? Well, it's so much easier to do if you just hook up a MIDI keyboard. And of course, Access uh, doesn't allow you to do that. But Artist and Hybrid and Pro and EFX Plus as well do. And so here is this 37 key MIDI keyboard that I carry around with me. Some of you who've seen the Autotune videos know that I use it a lot. So let's hook that up here and just do a MIDI track. 
and see what happens. So I'm going to do a MIDI track and I'll set the output of that to the autotune on the vocal verse. See it says autotune artist number one. We'll set that here. Now we'll put it in record and in autotune I have to go over and hit advanced and allow the MIDI to target notes. And so if I play you can see it on the uh, on the keyboard there. So let's play Pro Tools and whatever else. Too many drinks I consumed to even very, very cool, right? And of course, if you don't play any notes, it just kind of does its normal thing. All right, so that's it for Artist. Let me reset with another session, talk about my favorite version of Autotune, and that's the Pro version. And then for our last, we'll get into a little bit of Autotune EFX. So I'll be right back, set everything up. Here we go. All right, so we're set up back in the other session, and we've got Autotune Pro open, and I just want to bring up Autotune Artist in Audio Suite just to put them up side by side. I had mentioned earlier that Artist is the auto version of Pro and well you can see they look exactly alike here. Everything about it is included. Uh, even the advanced page in Pro is uh, included. It's it just exactly alike. So I'm telling you the truth when I say Artist is the auto version of Pro. But the idea with Pro is that we have this graph mode, and this is the most comprehensive plugin for tuning and pitch shifting, and I'm going to show you why. First, what I want to do though is move over and let's make this uh, screen in Autotune just a little bit. We're going to, going to go to preferences here. Uh, 1400 is about right for this 1080 setup. Let's we'll save that, and it's going to make the plugin just a little wider for us. Now, of course, if we go back to auto, it's, you know, that screen space is useless. But let's come in here, and I'm going to press pitch and time here because we need to track the information and get it into, uh, excuse me, get it into Autotune so we can deal with it offline. And if you don't know this trick in Pro Tools to get pitch information into a plugin easily, here it is. You just click, right click on the plugin, commit up to this insert while you've got the uh, plug in waiting on the information. Let's hit do nothing and it's going to bounce it offline, but it's going to bounce it through the plugin. And Pro Tools is really good about this. You can kind of get stuff in faster than real time and you'll see that it brings it in. Now all we're going to do is come over here and hit undo so it gets rid of that other track, but the pitch and time information stays intact. So let's zoom in here come back and you can see how we're all tracked in and ready to go. All right, so these are the note uh, where she is. Let's play a little bit and I'll show you how it goes along in real time. Mm -hmm. Now she's pretty good, right? So let's zoom in a little bit. Let me show you how you're not stuck to, all right, where are you going? Let me show you how you're not stuck to putting in manually, you can actually import the auto settings. So if we go over to auto mode here and bring it down to about 40, put flex tune up just a little bit, make sure we're in A minor, uh, then we can bring those settings, again, kind of in non real time and apply it to the note objects. And you can see what it would have done if I relax the retune speed just a little bit, or let's set, let's set it up to zero. And I'll go into graph mode and then re-import it here and you can see how that would bring everything. So what you could do if you wanted the auto-tune effect but it was glitching in some places, you could import that into your graph mode and then just tweak the places where it's glitching to have a really perfect affected vocal. But today we don't want to do that. So let's go back to uh, the auto mode here and relax this just a little bit and bring it in and that'll relax it up just a bit. Okay, so maybe you don't want to do that. Let me select all of this here um, and cut all of those, and so we're back to normal here. Maybe you want to do more of uh, another approach, which are note objects. So what we can do is we can make notes, and it'll uh, either do it from our MIDI input or here, and we could change the number of notes that it does to kind of get some refinement. And it's the same basic thing as auto mode offline. So let me play a little bit and let you see what it's, what it's doing. Mm -hmm. everywhere, everyone. 
And so if you're used to working this way with node objects, it's a great thing. And you can take each you know, node object and do some different things with it and retune accordingly. Uh, well, I've got everything here. Let me deselect. There we go. And you can hear, gives a nice little pitch for you. And you could change this, just that one, or change it here, and you can cut up and you know do some different things just like you would in, in different products. But the way I love to use Pro is just, let's say that that little curve is giving you some trouble. What I would do is I would just get rid of these two node objects and go straight in with the line here, uh, just the way I would want it. And tune that accordingly or split it up and do some other things. And so working with lines in graph mode for me is the way to go. So let me cut all these node objects. Let's go back over here and I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, again, she is stupid in tune with this scratch vocal. Uh, but let's say I wanted to get just maybe this one uh, and that one right there. And she's a little up on this one. Let's actually throw her down pretty quick. And you see I can do a different retune speed for that one node object as opposed to this one. Maybe I could actually relax that particular one just a little bit. Coming on through, that vibrato looks, ah, this note, let's not let her go down. Let's actually tighten her up on that. And so you can get really crazy with each one. And you notice that I'm leaving most of the notes in this example untuned. So if you're kind of a purist, uh, and want some notes tuned but not others, well, this is the way to do it, and you can have them tuned exactly like you want. Let me draw a curve here, and I'm going to show you how uh, you can just kind of tame up some of this vibrato. You just kind of draw a new vibrato in, and there we go. So if I, you know, if we played that, it would be... I wish I was a superhero Yeah, ah, so she's actually got a wrong note here. That's so interesting that that is the example I chose. And let's actually use a note object to help her come down here. Let's see how that sounds. Yeah, that actually sounds a lot better. Let's see. Play it again. Perfect. Okay, so that's a brilliant kind of unexpected example of how lines and curves just make it beautiful. So yay that. All right, so let's draw this back just a little bit. If we turn on format, the results are even better. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, well, again, let's kind of back up. You may have noticed that I tracked with pitch and time turned on here. And that allows me to move some node objects. So we'll select here and make a selection and simply just move some things around. And let me let you listen to what that sounds like. Saving everyone, and maybe they would, I would so there's so much to talk about, so much to, let's just undo that really quick, so much to deal with. Uh, and if you want to know more about what you know each and every knob does, just go to the tutorial section on Autotune, and I'm there doing a lot of these, most of them, in fact. Um, and that's how to get more out of this plugin. For time's sake, here on this video, and for frankly boredom's sake, let's uh, let's move on and talk about Autotune Hybrid before we get to EFX Plus, which uh, which is really something. So let's get rid of this and bring up Autotune Hybrid, and it's the DSP version of Autotune, and man, this plugin is fast. It is blazing fast. It is 0 0.001 milliseconds from input to output, and I did this test myself. Native plugins are fast, but not this fast. I mean, this is designed for Pro Tools HDX systems, for Venue S6L, or for the Pro Tools Carbon interface, where you really need that input 
uh, to output through Auto-Tune for tracking. So you can literally load up, like we used to do in the Auto-Tune five days, load up 10 of these or even 50 of these across your background tracks and just have them all for monitoring. And if you put it in classic mode, well, it's Auto-Tune 5 and it's, you know, it does the thing and it doesn't take up any of your CPU. It just uses what was on the card. So that's what you would use for that. All right, so that's Auto-Tune Hybrid and you can see it's just the auto version and it sounds amazing. Here we go. And if, you know, if I jam it up in classic mode, there's Auto-Tune 5. And there it is. So you might say, well, that's really cool. You know, we can already do that. This mix parameter in Auto-Tune Hybrid makes all the difference in the world because you can set up some vocaling uh, doubling effects with the original signal versus the mix signal and you're printing this to tape as many times as you want. So I've got a vocal coming in already. Let me play and you'll hear it. I've got it in input so we'll hear. So here's the, uh, I'm dreaming. the tune version. Slow down. And here's the original. I'm dreaming. And if we blend them together, let me play it again. I'm dreaming. So no other effects, that's just I'm the retune speed kind of coming in and just creating a little doubling now. effect. And so you can print this on every track that you've recorded through to get some seriously thick effects for your backgrounds. It's kind of a new sound and uh, I'm very excited about it. There we go. There's hybrid. All right, here's yet another session with EFX Plus loaded up this time. Let me play a bit and show you the track quickly. Like Alright, let's solo the vocal here and bring up one of these vocoder presets. Ghost Coder, I think, is the one I want to go for. And you'll see that three of the four slots are filled with an effect. And vocode is uh, really unique to the Autotune family, and it's the one I want to focus on here. So we get center pitch shift and vocode mix on the X, Y axis. Let me play and move some like control, show you what they sound like. It's quite the opposite. It's kind of cool. And if I play with pitch and throat, like that changes. Yeah. Control. And the two back can really mangle some things. So it's the XY pad with its two controls that make this plugin so simple to customize on the fly. Flipping the tab from Auto EFX over to Auto Motion reveals the whole step sequencer part of the plugin. So let's go through that quickly. The Auto Motion pattern generator is probably the coolest part of this plugin, and I created a new session to show this. It's just me singing a couple of notes, like a C and a B flat. Oh. Have a listen. And it's just oh. me pitched it down. All right, so the first thing I'll do is click Host Sync. And that's going to tie the tempo of the pattern generator to the tempo of Pro Tools, and I'll set it to 16th notes. Next is the pattern selector, and there are a whole lot of patterns to choose from. And I'm going to choose one that I put in, uh, JCG Minor ARP 1. And then next is the pattern button, and nothing happens to, until I press this, so let's play. And when I press, it'll play the pattern. And there are three trigger modes we need to be aware of, momentary, toggle, and auto. Momentary is simply on and off when you press it, and toggle is, you know, on and off latched. And auto uses the audio itself to trigger the states of the pattern generator. And this is really useful because the pattern generator can sense a break in the audio and reset the pattern generator based on whatever note you're singing at the time. Let's demonstrate. With auto mode on and play pattern standing by, let's play the track. Oh. So I have a pattern based on C minor, and when I seem to be flat, the pattern will re-trigger after the break in B flat because of auto mode. Going back to our other session really quick, I want to show you how momentary can be used as the vocal goes in real time. So if I play this part of the session, I'll hit momentary right where it needs to be. And it can give you a really cool effect, especially if you want to automate some of these controls. So that's it for this video. Hopefully now you understand the differences between all the different auto-tune versions and can choose the right one for your budget and needs. Thanks to Interis for getting me involved again. And thanks to Insta for providing this amazing platform where we can talk about gear and music and how to create artful music with the gear. I also love their platform 
uh, where they protect intellectual property with buying the software you use and so forth. So I thank Ray and all the guys at Insta for making that happen. If you want to know more of what they're doing, of course, go to insta.org, I-M-S-T-A.org. If you want to know more of what Antares and Autotune are doing, it's just autotune.com. And if you want to know more about what I'm doing, it's just jchrisgriffin.com. It's Chris Griffin with the letter J in front of it. All right, see you next time. Thank you.